Angular acceleration is the change in angular velocity divided by the period of time. If we turn on this record player, the record starts with an angular speed of 0 RPM, and it needs to accelerate to reach a speed of 33 and a third RPM before the record can be played. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity. Even if that change is negative, or if the object is slowing down, we still call it acceleration. We use the Greek letter alpha to represent angular acceleration. So alpha is equal to the change in velocity, delta omega, divided by the period of time, delta t. As an example, let's say this record starts from rest with a velocity of 0 RPM, and we turn it on. Usually the record is up to speed in a few seconds, but this one is broken. So let's say it takes two minutes to accelerate and reach an angular velocity of negative 33 and a third RPM. What's the angular acceleration of the record? The change in angular velocity would be negative 33 and a third RPM minus zero RPM, final minus initial. We divide that by the period of time, two minutes. Remember that the unit of RPM means revolutions per minute. So we're taking negative 33 and a third revolutions per minute and dividing that by two minutes. That gives us negative 16 and two thirds revolutions per minute per minute, or revolutions per minute squared. This seems like a weird unit, but it's saying that after every minute that passes, the record speeds up by 16 and two thirds revolutions per minute. Most of the time, though, we're going to use the SI unit for angular acceleration, which is radians per second squared. Before we wrap up, it wouldn't be a kinematics lesson without the last two kinematic equations that we can use when an object has a constant angular acceleration. These two equations are the same ones from linear motion and circular motion. The only difference is that we're using variables for angular motion. The first equation says that the final angular position is equal to the initial angular position plus the initial angular velocity times the period of time plus one half times the angular acceleration times the period of time squared. This can be used to solve for things such as the final angular position of a rotating object after accelerating for a period of time. The second equation says that the final angular velocity squared equals the initial angular velocity squared plus two times the angular acceleration times the angular displacement, or the final angular position minus the initial angular position. This equation can help us find the final angular velocity of a rotating object after it accelerates over a given angular displacement. Again, these are the same equations you've already seen, but they use the variables for angular motion.